the engine room, where premierships are won or lost. But which NRL side right now has the best forward pack in the league? Welcome to our two-part series on forward pack 17 to 1, where we're going to be ranking forward packs. Firstly, this video, the bottom half, and then the next video, 8 to 1. So let's go. So guys, starting us off, coming in at number 17, who have we got, Longy? We've got the Canterbury Bulldogs, and look, this is a team who was very hyped coming into this season, but they lost some very experienced campaigners, so Luke Thompson out injured, Paul Vaughan disappeared, Josh Jackson out retired. These are some very important components to their pack. Saying that, Max King's been a revelation, and Jacob Preston, he's a freak. So it is on the up for the dogs, but right now, number 17. At number 16, we've got the St. George Illawarra Dragons, and right now, I think they're not performing to the level of some of their players. I think Jack DeBellin is in there having, you know, a comeback season, as it were, but it's not enough at this point in time. Blake Laurie's a bit of a highlight, and Jack Bird is playing some pretty good, and then not so good footy at the same time. It's just... It kind of revolves around their hooker, I think, as well. They don't really have a set option there. Ben Hunt's in and out of that position. Moses and Bai in and out of that position. He doesn't really know how to get those guys moving, and I think they're struggling a little bit each and every week. Yeah, the Dragons are better for fantasy than they are for real life, and look, join us for fantasy content later, because <laughs> Jack DeBellin's all about it. And number 15 here, we've got the Newcastle Knights. Now, the Knights are a team where you keep looking at their pack and you keep thinking, all right, this is a good pack. Mm. This is a good pack. You've got Tyson Frizzell, you've got Dan Safiti, Jacob Safiti, both from the Origin side last year. You've got Adam Elliott coming in. You've got Jaden Braley, who he can't stay on the field, but he's a bit of a freak as well. And you think, this is probably a good forward pack, but on the field, it doesn't translate for the Knights. So I keep having hope coming into each season. <laughs> and I feel for Knights fans, because it must be a frustrating ride. At number 14, we've got the Manly Warringah Seagulls, and I like this pack on paper. It looks pretty uh, excellent as far as, you know, getting guys like Helmer Tuolangi and then Ola Kuatu. They've actually been pretty good this year. The problem comes for me with the underrated guys in the middle who just aren't at the level of some of the best props in the game. I think you got Paseca, who's a big body. He loves to carry the ball yeah. on some days. Other days he can get a bit quiet. Kepi, for me, is one of those guys who you need in your team. He's kind of a bit like a Tom Gilbert. He's all effort, loves to belt blokes, and I love guys like that. And then when Jake Trebojevic is fit, they actually look a lot better. They don't leak as many easy runs through the middle, and Jake's there to clean up and make a few tackles. But... This year, I just think that they're underperforming, and I think they have to be at 14. Yeah, and Lachlan Croker's gone off the boiler a bit this year, too. Like He, he had some great form in the last couple of years, proved a lot of people wrong, but it hasn't been that year for him. No. The other guy I'd mention is Aloye. Yeah. Aloye can be the best player on the field on his day, and then he has a game where he gets suspended for six weeks. So. Yeah, or drops the ball four or five times. Yeah, so, yeah. so rocks and diamonds. <laughs> Number 13 slot. We've got a team that, uh, this is going to be controversial, but North Queensland Cowboys... Your Cowboys, Miles. Mm. This team on paper has one of the packs of mm. the comp, but it's just not working right now. No. Um, I'm going to focus on positives here because there are a lot of good things to like about this team. Uh, Lukey. Hey, yeah. Lukey. Oh, my God. That performance he had last night. Uh, <laughs> Whew, yeah, I got him in fantasy a couple of weeks ago, so I'm pretty happy. Um, but he, he's a freak. You know, Nana is a freak. Cotter's a freak. Tamalolo, we know who Tamalolo is. The issue for me comes with some of the rotations and mm. the way they're played. So you've got, I love Jake Granville, but he should not be getting big minutes as a prop. No, he really shouldn't be. I think there's also another side to that forward mm. pack. So you've got your Luki, Nanai, yeah. uh, Tamalolo, Cotter, as you spoke about, but then you've also got McLean. Jamin Tunnel Brown. I think Cohen Hess has had such an up and down year, but yeah. this year, kind of having a bit of a resurgence in somewhat of a losing team, which I find very interesting. Uh, never really kind of recaptured that uh, 2015 form mm. that he had. Uh, What's the name of that young bloke? Leave on the bench? Mitchell Dunn. No, no, no. The other guy coming on for Luki on the edge. Oh, uh, Kili Kefu Fini Fuyaki. That's it, yeah. He's, he looks good. Yeah, he does. I mean, limited limited glimpses, but... 19, 19 years old as well, so I'm, I'm pretty how happy. Do you, how do you keep finding them? We keep, we keep producing these back rowers, <laughs> so I don't know where they're coming from, but it's, uh, it's absolutely yeah. phenomenal to watch. It's good stuff. Uh, I'll throw it to you for number 12 here. Yeah, oh. another underperforming team this mm. year. We've got uh, the Sydney Roosters, and they're just not gelling. Like... And you would say that coming into this year, they had one of the monster forward packs. Yep. You know, you got Radley, Jared Maria 
Hargraves, Matt Lodge, Lindsay Collins, Tupanua was coming back. Crichton, I mean, he had his little yeah. little mishaps. But I think that Nat Butcher is a great replacement for those guys as well. And then you got guys like Egan Butcher on the back of that. It's one of those things where you think the Roosters can plug in whoever they want to and still dominate, but it just hasn't happened this mm. year. Yeah, the loss of Tak Yaho, the loss of Connor Watson. Look, we, we talked about this in the preseason. We got a lot of things right, actually, mm. in our previews. We had the Dolphins much higher than everyone else, so <laughs> bragging about that. But the Chooks were one we talked about, fragility in the forward pack. A couple of injuries, and they are done. And it's worked out exactly like that. They've been blown off the park by other teams. If a team rocks up, they've got a half-decent forward pack, mm. and they play hard. They're beating the Roosters. It's just how it's happened this year. So yeah. it doesn't matter how much flash you've got in the back line. If your pack's getting run over, you're not going to get it done. Dan, mate, I've been trying to get out for some more cardio recently, but I keep getting some man shape. Where can I go to... <laughs> 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 no, no, we're not doing another take. All right, we've got heaps of compression shorts on the Casual Athlete store. Look, really affordable prices. Anything for about 20 bucks on the store, you can get really cool designs too. So make sure to check it out. If you want to be going out in winter, if you want to avoid that chafe, if you just want to look cool at footy training, we got the stuff for you. <laughs> Number 11 here. <clears throat> this is a team that had mixed expectations coming into this year. And this is one that I personally got wrong because I thought they were going to do better. To be fair, last few weeks they have been doing better. Definitely. The West Tigers. And you look at that Tigers pack, and I'd love to put it higher on paper, because Abby Coruscant is electric. You've got John Bateman, Isaiah Bapali on your edges. You've got Atoa Kamano. Clemmer. Um, Clemmer, yeah. Offa Hengawi is, is a good player. Twile's a good player. Like, as a pack on paper, it's excellent, but it hasn't really been getting the job done to the extent that I was hoping from an offensive perspective this year. Mm. Saying that, the last few weeks, I mean, beating Penrith the way they did, that was the forward pack. Yeah, I, I think when it gets down to wet weather footy, you, you rely on the backs of guys like Clemmer, who yeah. were basically thrown out of their last club. I think Clemmer's still playing some good footy. Uh, I don't understand right. why he's possibly not in the conversation for a New South Wales jersey, considering that he's played there before. Yeah. And we've got a few injuries in the props at the moment. I think the other find that uh, I'd like to point out is Fanua Bole. I, I think he's actually come into that 13 role and provided a little bit more of that hard running style that maybe Offen Gowie doesn't offer. That's why Offen Gowie's been pushed to the bench. But I think he's been a real find for them. They've got a number of finds across the park. But yeah, I think the Tigers, they just haven't delivered on the expectations that were produced to fans and those around the league. I'll throw something at you then. If they were playing better in terms of, you know, sort of winning games, scoring some points, mm. would we be speaking differently about them? Because my view on the Tigers is that they're getting down the field pretty comfortably. Mm. They're getting a lot of red zone opportunities. That's your forwards job, right? Yeah. They're not finishing. No. And it's it's the halves and it's the back line. Um, look, Buller, Buller looks good, but he's only had a few. He's not three first grade games. No. Um, you know, the halves, like you lose Dewey. He was sort of their main potency. The outside backs are showing glimpses, but I personally think I could put the forward pack even higher than this. It's just hard to do when the team is sitting last in the ladder. Yeah, I think I totally agree with you in that sense that the options that are being taken by yeah. the guys on the back of the forward pack yeah. are the issue, but it's really going on team record, isn't it, at this moment? I think we're watching John Bateman every week trying to score points for the yeah. team. He's running left to right and, and trying to create something. It's just not working at the moment. Moving on to our number 10 spot, we have the Melbourne Storm, and this pack lost a lot of guys over the off-season. Felice Kafusi, Kenny mm. Bromwich, Jesse Bromwich, and I didn't really see much hope for them coming into this year, but... I think they're always going to be the storm, and they've got you know that system working well for them. Welch back as well. I think a lot of people forgot about him on the back of his Achilles injury, so he's playing some good footy. And I think they look a very different side when either Nelson Osofa Solomona and Tui Kamakamitha are out of the team at the moment. Kamakamitha uh, actually is a bit of an underrated guy in my eyes, and then Nelson's just Nelson. So. They've had yeah. those guys missing for certain parts of this year, and it's really showed. Yeah, those guys are scary to tackle. Like, yeah. I reckon Kamitha Mitha might be the guy who would hurt you the most <laughs> to tackle. It's because he looks so, like, rock solid. I know. And there's there's knees and there's elbows, and look, Nelson just throws the elbows out there. But 
Those two guys are scary. Nelson's taken another step this year, mm-hmm. which is terrifying for the opposition. But then they've got other guys there who who plug the gaps. So Christian Welch, Josh King, these guys are rock solid role players who are, you know, they're, they're good players, but they're sort of more cleaning up on defense, you know, mm-hmm. focused on work rate while those guys are more explosive. The other thing I'd throw out there is the edge back rowers. So Eli Katoa, we knew what he was going to be. Trent's it's taking some time for mm. Katoa. Yeah. That's, that's the interesting thing there. But Trent Lawyer, like you were going to mention, he's doing a job. Mm. He's doing a job. He's, he's a good defender. He's running reasonably solid lines. He's, he's keeping the shape. That's basically all he needs to do with, you know, especially with Pappenhausen coming back soon. Yeah. With, with Melbourne, they're such a fundamentals team. Mm. Yeah. And that's basically, you know, from Craig Bellamy. Uh, basically from Wayne Bennett has taught that into Craig Bellamy and he's gone through and and taught it to the Melbourne Storm for 20 plus years. Mm. So you know what you're going to get from the Storm. Uh, When you've got guys that they can trust in those positions, that's the key for them. Uh, I think that they've put guys into positions before and they've realised that they don't work, so they just shove them off. You can think of guys like Brodie Croft, you know, yep. guys like uh, Grant Anderson, I think last year had one good game and then they tried to keep him for the next five rounds, realised he's not working. Will Warbrick still coming along, yep. but back on their forward pack, I-, I think that Tarek Sims, I thought, was going to be the guy coming yeah. into that spot. He hasn't year. been doing much, hey? He has he was talking about Origin a couple of months ago. It's like, well, get the starting side first, mate. Yeah, maybe try something yeah. like that. <laughs> hey, let's, you're talking about trust. I want to go to the final team of this. It's number nine. The Gold Coast Titans, a team that I don't trust in tipping, but it's no, it's, it's a team that's all upside though. So the Titans are a young side, they've got a young captain in Tino, uh, they're so fun to watch. Mm. Probably one of the teams where I go, Titans are playing, I'm going to watch that. Yeah, it, it's funny when you look at like Melbourne's forward pack and you go, oh, I don't see any true superstars in there. And then you yeah. go to the Titans forward pack and there are some like A-star mm. players, like Tino, as you mentioned, yeah. the feeder. Let's talk about Fafita. The best resurgence yeah. this year. Let's, let's talk about him, because I grabbed him in every draft. <laughs> and I am going to talk about that forever, because it was genius. <laughs> um, <laughs> look, Dave Fafita, the work rate on him, he's, he's... We were talking about this last year, and I think we talked about it in our preview this year, where we mm. said, Fafita needs to be making 10 to 20 runs a game, otherwise you're wasting him. Like, he's not a defensive specialist. Um, he's not going to be, you know, leading your kick chases. He shouldn't need to be doing those things. No. Um, you got, you know, Joe Stimson on the other side to do that kind of stuff, but... He needs to be taking 10, 15 runs a game. He's been taking 15 runs every week. So they're playing into his strengths. And look, we still haven't seen that pop-off game. There's been a few plays that have been called back with little obstructions (laughs) or, you know, little misdemeanors. But he's going to have some of those explosion games. And if you don't have him in fantasy yet, go grab him. I think what's really helped him is actually Kieran Foran coming into the team. He's he's switched sides. And now he's with a very experienced... 5'8", who's getting in the ball Just when, him, when yeah. he wants it. And then he's got Brian Kelly and Cam Pereira on the back of that. That left side of the Titans all of a sudden is looking lethal. Yeah, And uh, I think it's it's you know a credit to their forward pack that they've actually won a few games Well, let's, let's talk about that too, because a strong forward pack isn't just the forwards scoring tries. Mm. It isn't just the forwards making big runs. It's, it radiates outwards. So mm. a good forward pack elevates everyone else. And Kieran Foran, what, he nearly had three tries last week, <laughs> which hurt to watch. Um... <laughs> You know, Cam Pereira is scoring tries for fun. Yeah, I know. He's yeah. absolutely killing it. Kelly looks fantastic. Like, their shape looks good. Yeah, the Brimson's in and out. He's, he's had a tough time, but they just bring Jaden um, Campbell in. Mm. And he does the same job. They brought, uh, you know, like Tanner Boyd into the starting side. He's really grown into it this year. Yeah. They've been missing barrels. Real game manager. Randall looks good. Like, Randall. This is well. Yeah, you know, that, that's the strength of the forward pack. Foto Waker, we haven't even talked about. No. He should be in the origin side. Yeah, Foto Waker's been killing it lately. Uh, I've also got him yeah. in one of the drafts. And, nice. and this year yeah. as well, it's it's one of those things where, can he have a bounce back year? Because last year was a little bit disappointing, but the year prior was, you know, 60 points a game for me yeah. in Supercoach. So he's back to that level now, yeah. and, and, and that's what... I expect for him, and he has played Origin in the past. So mm. if you want him to get there, then he's got to be, yeah. he's got to be able to maintain it week to week. Uh, guys yeah. like Aaron Clark, I think, are underrated in this uh, Titan side as well. I think last year he was really starting to show that he could play thirteen, and I think it's still an option for him. But they've got Isaac Liu there at the moment. I think he's a bit of an underrated guy coming from the Roosters. Couldn't really find a spot, but yeah, it's just about you know finding those A star players and then supporting roles on the back of it. So the Titans round out. Part one here, ninth best forward pack in the comp. We're going to have a suggested video right here for the top eight forward packs in the game. So join us there. Make sure to comment who you think is the best forward pack in the comp. We'll see you in the next video.